Hello friends, welcome to the sixth part of this tutorial for beginners in Revit. Here we are going to talk about dimensions, but also finishing the chapter about stairs from the last video. Let's go! Let's draw a stair in a U-shape and our goal is to attach it in this compartment. Using the same assembled stair, I need 16 risers to reach the next floor. So I draw the first 8. This time I'm using the location line in the center, but that's fine. Then I start the second run of risers aligned with the end of the first run. Then drag the mouse down to draw the stairs vertically in this direction. As you can see, this is a simple way to draw a stair in a U shape with the landing. This is important. With the sketch mode active, it's still possible to move the entire stair, but make sure you select it all. And as you can see, it's a bit hard to attach it to the walls by just dragging it from a random point. However, the move command is a great tool to attach each run to the wall, you will see. Click on move, select the element, press enter, choose this end point at a corner and move the run towards the wall. With this method, you can notice that the run width doesn't change. Then do exactly the same for the second run. And when I finish, just click in a blank space. To attach the landing, I can use the Align tool, select the reference line, then this entity to attach it to the wall. I can exit the sketch mode and I get a message that the railing is not continuous. This is common to happen when I draw a U-shaped stair. If you zoom a bit, this is the struggling point. In a 3D view, you can see better its appearance. There is a little gap here, and in the other side there is a small jump from the landing to the ramp. So, the way to solve this is increasing the landing. I am going to double click in the stair to get back to the sketch mode. Then I select the landing and if I click and hold it, this little arrow you can see that I am able to extend the landing by dragging down with the mouse and I can either put the distance that is indicating here or type a specific value. Let's put 0.3 and with that I will have enough room. Then I go to the other side and repeat the process. Click on the tick to confirm the changes and exit the sketch mode. Now I no longer have that issue. And in the 3D view, you can see the railing being continuous and it looks also more beautiful. Now let's learn some tips. After placing the stair, there is an arrow indicating the direction to reach the upper floor. When we are in the sketch mode, we draw from the down part to up. However, if we select the stair, we can click on this little arrow to switch the direction. When we go to edit the type of stairs, there are some specific parameters just for them. The section at the top are the calculation rules. There is a maximum riser height, a minimum thread depth and a minimum run. Basically, I get a warning message when any of these parameters is not satisfied. For example, if I change the thread depth and click on apply, I get this information. However, the program still makes the change. Below, I can edit the supports that I want to the stir. If I want a stringer, a carriage or even known. If I'm creating a stair in a slope attached to walls, for example, it's not required the stringer, so you can check known. In the next chapter, we are going to talk about dimensions. As you remember, in this tutorial we have already learned how to work with temporary dimension lines and how to make them permanent. So, it's time to get a bit deeper into this topic, but let's do it gradually. Now look at this example. To insert a dimension line, I have to go to the Annotate tab, Dimensions panel and choose one of these types. 
I'm going to start with the option Align. Now, if you look at the options bar, we have by default the pick option set as entire wall. This means we can click on a wall and place a dimension line of its entire length. So, it's simple. And remember that after, I can still readjust the position by moving the grips to different references. No, sometimes it suits me better to add a dimension line by choosing two points instead. And for that, I'm going to switch this tab to Individual References. With this, I can add a dimension line from this side of this wall up to the other extremity. Then click again on the position that I want the new dimension to be located. Let's measure now the horizontal line. And if I don't press Escape to exit the command, I keep adding dimensions as long as I want. Now I want to start from the left side, but you can notice it's highlighting the center of the wall. The reason for this is that I have the reference lines set to detect the wall center lines instead of the wall face, which is exactly what I'm going to switch to. Now it's working as I want. To finish, let's put also a dimension to measure this vertical wall. Editing dimension lines. One important thing, it's not possible to change the length of the dimension by just double clicking on it. Instead, it opens this window where I can edit some options. Here, I can replace the actual value with the text or add prefixes, suffixes or text above and below. For example, I can choose to replace the value with the text. Type for example wall1 and then click on OK to save the changes. But have in mind, if I want to cheat or just change the actual value to an approximate number, the program doesn't let me to do it. It says that I cannot replace a value with a different value. Basically, to modify the length of this wall, I have to select the wall first and then click on the dimensions in the same way that I do for the temporary ones. Notice also that when the dimension is editable, the color changes to blue. But not always is possible to change the length of a wall by simply changing the length of the permanent dimension line. If you look at the horizontal wall above, it's intersected with a wall at the left and another wall at the right corner. Suppose I want to increase the length to 8 meters, would it extend to the right or to the left? For this reason, the dimension is not editable right now. Yet here, without a wall at the right, I select the wall. And now, yes, I'm able to change the length to 8 meters. As you can see, it extends to the right, because there is no wall there. Now let's see some tips, tricks and additional options. Entire walls, auto dimensioning options. Have a look at this floor plan. I'm going to insert another aligned dimension, but this time I will pick an entire wall. As you remember, if I select this wall, I can add a dimension of its total length. Now, at the options bar, there is a button called Options. Click there. Auto dimension options. Basically, I'm able to create dimension segments in an entire wall, and this is a very useful feature you are going to understand. I tick on intersecting walls, and you will see what's going to happen. Click OK, select the wall, and I automatically create segments when walls are intersecting. So this is very nice. I can avoid adding dimension lines manually with this, which could take a long time for large buildings. For example, a hospital or a hotel. Now, if I want to do the same for the wall above, just click there right away. And when I finish adding dimensions, press escape. Don't press enter because it doesn't work. Another option is opening. In this case, I add segments in order to measure the distances regarding walls or doors or eventually a different kind of opening. I can choose from centers or widths. First, I'll show you the option centers. Choose this wall that has several openings 
and you can see that here I measure between the center of each door or window. If instead I choose widths, I add a dimension line with segments measuring the widths of each door and window and the distance between them. Now, suppose in this dimension line, I want to delete one of these segments. Maybe one or two of these are not necessary in my drawing. If I try to select just a part, it doesn't work by just clicking on it. You can see that I select the full dimension line. However, there is an easy way to do this. Do you remember that we can use the button tap of the keyboard to switch between overlapping objects? That also works here. I press tab when hovering this segment, and now that it turned blue, I can click to select just this dimension, and then press delete to get rid of it. Now they are two different elements, you can see that I have to select one at a time. In the next example, I'm going to create a dimension line, but this time using individual references. I pick these two reference lines. Then, to place just this dimension, I just click anywhere out of an individual reference. That's what I showed to you before. But let's repeat this. I pick the same lines, and then if I choose another reference, it adds a continuous dimension here. And of course, I can keep doing this process until I'm happy with the result. As you can see, this is also a quick way to have several dimension segments. And one big advantage here, when comparing to auto-dimensioning, is that I can choose the references by myself. Another important thing. Suppose I made a mistake in the selection. I don't need to worry about that because I can always click on a witness line, witnesses lines are these dimension extension lines, to remove it. Witness lines. I can add or remove witness lines after a dimension is placed on the screen. For that, I have to select the object, and on the ribbon there is an option here, edit witness lines. Click there, and I can add a new witness line by just picking a new reference, for example the side of this door. Also, I can choose a reference inside the segment, and it will split it. Or even remove a witness line if I click on an existing one. At the end, click on an empty place to confirm the changes. Ah, and don't press escape because it will cancel what you were doing. Constraints. When I select a dimension line, you can see these locks on each segment. At this moment, all of them are opened, meaning that these dimensions may change if I change the position of the windows, or move the walls instead. Let's click on this lock. What I did was constraining the distance from the limit of the external wall and the window. Now it has a fixed value of 1.11 meters. I select this wall. You can see the indication of the constraint here down. And if I move the wall towards the right, the elements of the wall below move in order to keep this distance of 1.11 meters unchangeable. Let's set just a specific distance between the wall where my stairs are attached and the external one instead of a random distance, for example 5. Another option in dimensioning in Revit is the dimension equality. Have a look at the wall on the right. First, I'm going to add an extra window here. I can go to the Modify tab, click on Copy, select the window, press Enter, pick this endpoint and place a new window here. Then I'm going to add a new dimension. Choose entire walls and on the options I'm going to specify centers and remove the tick from intersecting walls. Click on OK. Then I add an align dimension to this wall 
And now you can notice this EQ with a red slash on it. It's not very easy to see because it's quite small. If I hover it, it says toggle dimension equality. Basically, if I click there, the windows are automatically moved in order to have the same value in these three dimensions. And even if I increase the wall, the equality always skips. Ok, there is a question you can ask yourself. If the EQ symbol is displayed, how can we know the length of these dimensions? If you click on the dimension, then click with the right button, you can see a tick here on EQ display. If you uncheck it, the values are displayed now, however they are still in equality constraint mode. We know that because the EQ symbol is there without the cross on it. But how can we remove a dimension equality? The answer is select the dimension and click on the EQ to remove the constraint. It's just simple as that. But what I think usually happens is people tending to select the dimension and delete it right away. Then we get this warning message. Basically we are removing the dimension but the elements are still constrained. This way also works but make sure you press on unconstrained here. More dimension styles. Linear dimensions. These are similar to aligned dimensions, even a bit less versatile. The way they work, I must click in two points to place the dimension. For example, I'm going to click on this corner. Ah, and there is actually a blue point appearing on the screen, even it's very hard to see sometimes. Then I'm going to select the point where this window starts as the second point, And finally place the dimension. But look what happens when I choose the same first point and then try to click along this line, a place that isn't a corner endpoint or intersecting point. I cannot place the dimension, as you can see. So, in the dimension that I have created, the points were located in the same x-axis. They were horizontally aligned. Now let's see a different situation. I'm going to choose the first point as the end of this wall face. And look, when the point is not easily understandable, Revit displays a bigger point. The second point, I choose it a bit up, so they are not either vertically or horizontally aligned. And finally, I can add a horizontal dimension, or if I move all the way out, I can now display the vertical distance between the points. Angular dimension. With this type, I can measure angles. Look at this example where there is a diagonal wall. I'm going to put an angle dimension there. I click on angular. My selection mode is set to prefer wall faces. I choose this face, then this vertical one, then I just click on the position that I want to place it. After I can keep adding more angles as I wish. Radial dimension. This time I'm going to draw a circular wall. I choose circle in the draw panel. Just make a random wall. Then go to annotate. Click on radial dimension. Then click on this face to put a radius there. The diameter dimension is very similar. It just has a double arrow indicating the diameter and it's easy to differentiate from the radius dimension. So, it's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and subscribe to Cadding Black to receive notifications of new updates. There are Revit and AutoCAD tutorials, but in the future, maybe you will find some more. Alright, keep in touch and see you next time.